Hello, Fed802 here with hopefully an interesting and unique video about Minecraft. Uh, we're going to be talking about Minecraft in conjunction with a separate program called AutoIt. It's a scripting language. Not sure if you've ever heard of it, uh, but I'll be explaining a little bit about it in some detail. Uh, I started a new world. Uh, with the new with the new release, the new snapshot, I guess we're at twelve week twenty four A waiting on the new stuff coming out. Uh I had been itching to start a new world for a while and uh I'll show a little bit of that this video. Uh I finally found the seed I was looking for. I'm gonna set up a base, setting up the mob system right now so I can because really what I need is TNT to blow out a lot of stuff. But anyway, here we are with Mr snowman. Uh, right now he's blocked in with glass. This is an etho design, as most of my things are etho designs, because I'm not original at all. And when I watch videos, I think, oh man, that's really awesome. I want that in my world. And unfortunately, that's why I don't do a Let's Play, because most of my stuff's not original. So anyway, you trap the snowman into the corner there with the glass blocks, and he can breathe, because it's glass. And then I put in the water just because it's going to get lots of snowballs everywhere. So my mob base is going to be made, or my mob, or yeah, my mob crusher, there we go, is going to be made out of snow blocks because it's the most easily abundant block and all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to show you what auto it can do before I tell you. So anyway, let's get all lined up with our snow block here and I'm gonna push a single button one button oh you know what I've gotta make sure that the that the program is running real smooth there real smooth alright and one button so what Ottawa does is it's a scripting language that simulates keystrokes computer commands, that kind of thing. So right now my computer thinks I'm pressing mouse keys uh, when I'm really not. Uh, which is going to save my mouse you know, several hundred clicks apiece from having to actually manually harvest all of this snow. Uh, so it clicks through a few hundred times, kills the shovel, scrolls down to the next shovel, and continues on. So, I've got it figured out for four shovels is going to fill up my inventory with snowballs. And then we'll see what happens at that point. The biggest annoyance of snowballs for me is clicking four different groups, putting them into the crafting table, making the snow block, because you can't shift click it, so it just takes forever. So here's the real beauty of auto it. So I'm not moving the mouse at all. It's the, just sitting there on my desk, not moving. But the game thinks it's moving. I know some people would say the, the easy alternative in, to this is just to move over to creative mode and create the blocks that way. But, uh, I don't know. I, I know that this really isn't legitimate, but I feel much more legitimate in this because at least I'm doing the work to make the auto it script and that's you know it's a skill I have that I use it like work and stuff coding so I'll show you that again so I can just craft my four shovels come back and we're gonna push the button one more time one button so this generates two stacks plus four blocks, I believe, with each, so each group of four shovels creates two stacks and four blocks of snow blocks, which is just great, you know, it doesn't take me long hardly at all to just sit here and watch it do this, plus I think it looks pretty cool. So I'll kind of explain, I'll show some of the code here in just a second, and then we'll come back to the video. Uh, but what I did was I mapped out the inventory slots based on coordinates, uh, which you can do fairly easily. You just get the mouse coordinates of each inventory slot, map it out, 
coded some functions for that. Uh, and I'll show you what that means here in a second. Wow, lag. Okay. And, uh... Basically, after I coded the function, I didn't really even need to know the code anymore. I could just tell it, okay, do this function and move this inventory slot to this inventory slot, and it'll do it. So, uh, there are functions I can use in the future if I find other applications that I'm just repeating the same mundane tasks over and over and over a few hundred thousand times, uh, which might be neat. And if I do anything like that, I'll definitely definitely post videos of it, but I wanted to show how powerful auto it was uh, for neat little applications like this. Uh, for anybody watching from the auto it forums that is concerned with game automation, I have been over the end user license agreement with Minecraft repeatedly, and it is very clear that they want you to do stuff like this. In fact, the EULA says anything you find that's not, you know, or anything you do with the game that's not copyright infringement is okay by us, and we actually encourage it. So, the end user license agreement is encouraging me to use auto it with Minecraft. So, just in case anybody was concerned. So, let me hop over to the code, and I will give you guys an example of that. So, here we are looking at the actual script file. Uh, you can go to auto it, I believe. Uh, autoitscript.com. I'll post the link in the description uh, to get the language. It's free, uh, so you can do all sorts of all sorts of cool stuff with it for free. Uh, I'll kind of explain through here now. This is by no means the best way to code this, or the only, certainly not the only way to code it. Uh, so if anybody's laughing at my poorly inefficient means of coding, well, I just did this in the in about you know half hour yesterday to to run this. So. Basically, the the form of the script is you start with an include file. I'm including one other script file, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. Um, I'm setting three hotkeys, the end key, the home key, and the pause key. And each of these keys do these three different things. The start function, the convert snow function, and the pause script function. So we've got those functions listed down here that I've written, and I'll show those in a second. Uh, the other thing that this key for this script is a while loop, which basically says while one is equal to one, so always, then sleep for a thousand milliseconds or a hundred milliseconds. And so what that's going to do is that's going to just run the script in the background. And so it's going to say, okay, one is one, so I'm going to sleep, I'm going to wait, and then I'm going to wait, and then I'm going to wait repeatedly forever until I close the script. So that's going to keep it open in the background. It allows these three hotkeys to then uh, be valid. Otherwise, the script would just run through the hotkeys, say, yep, set all the hotkeys, and now we're ending. So you've got to keep it open. And so that's what this is for. Uh, so let's see what function to start with. We'll start with the inventory move function. And so what I've written here is the func command tells it we're starting a new function, inventory move and I've given it three parameters. Uh, so inventory one, inventory slot one parameter, inventory slot two parameter, and then the craft parameter. And I'll, I haven't really used that much, but I'll get to that in a second. If you set parameters equal to something in the function header, it's going to tell it that this is the default setting. So these two are I have to put in to tell the function what to do. If I don't include one of those two, the function will fail because it doesn't know what I'm doing. Uh, this third one I do not have to put in every time. If I don't put anything in, it'll assume zero. Uh, otherwise, it'll put use whatever I put in. Uh, so next I'm setting... Of course, none of this is going to make sense to everybody, and I'm not doing it from a beginner's perspective, but I'm just kind of quickly going through. These two things I'm setting up are arrays, and I use those for the coordinates. An arrays kind of like a string except you can put more than one value into it. In each case of these I've got two. So I come through and I set, okay, if inventory slot one, I tell it, you know, okay, so I tell them, I tell the function, I want you to move inventory slot 10 to inventory slot 2. So it comes through here and it says, okay, if inventory slot 1 is greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to 9, then these are the coordinates. Well, it's not, so we put in 10. 
So if inventory slot is equal is greater than or equal to 10 or less than or equal to 18, then use these coordinates. Well, that's the one we selected, so we're going to use those coordinates. So we come in and we tell it, okay, the first coordinate is 500 plus the number of the inventory slot minus 10 times 35. And so what that allows me to do is I don't have to program in the inventory slots for all of row 2. So I can tell it row 2 starts at 500 and then increments 35 pixels every inventory slot. So this actually fulfills the need for nine invent or yeah, nine inventory slots. So it just the rest of this is just going through for the other inventory uh, or for the rest of the inventory. These four are the crafting table. And then this second thing repeats for the second inventory item, which I could do more efficiently uh, with some loops, but I just did it this way because copy-paste was just fine with me. Uh, and then we tell it, okay, mouse click left at the coordinates we've given it. So mouse click is a, is a default function that comes with the script. And so its parameters are you tell it what key, so left, right, middle. If you're pressing any of the other buttons on a mouse that may have more buttons, uh, and then you tell it, all right, coordinate one, so the X coordinate, then the Y coordinate, we're telling it to click once, and I'm telling it with a speed of three, so I can actually speed it up to make it instant, but it's a little too fast for the Minecraft handle to handle, so I had to slow it down just a little bit. Uh, we're telling it to sleep for 100 milliseconds, which just gives the game time to move the mouse and click. Uh, we're doing another mouse click at the second coordinates, so it's going to click on the first inventory slot, it's going to move to the, wherever you want it to go next, and it's going to click again in the second inventory slot. So again, it's just left click the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, clicking once with a speed of three. Uh, so in the video you saw it was crafting all those snow blocks. So the easiest way I found to do this was to create another function. So we've got craft here, and we've got two parameters. We've got the amount we want to craft, which defaults to one and the inventory slot that we're going to put it in after we're done, which defaults to one. So here I've done a loop, uh, a for loop, and so what that means is it's going to basically repeat the section from the for to the next as many times as I tell it to. So it's going to repeat from one to however many I put in. So let's say I put in ten here. So it's going to count from one to ten every time. Well if I tell it 10. If I tell it 50, it's going to count from 1 to 50. Let's see how that works. And each time it counts, it's going to increment the i variable. And so what that's going to mean is it's going to allow us, I don't use it here, but if I wanted to increment you know, each time through, then if I put the i variable in, it's going to be changing that number each time through the for loop, which makes it really easy. Uh, I, I think I use that up, I use that up here, so we may, we may talk about that here in a second. But uh, anyway, so it's going to click, left click, and then these coordinates are the coordinates for the to the right of the crafting table where you're actually crafting the unit. So in, uh, in the example in the video, I was crafting 16 blocks each time, so it was just clicking 16 times up in that box to create the blocks. Uh, you can do shift click, but I was having trouble with the shift click, so I just went with the regular click, it was reliable worked every time. So uh, after I've clicked 16 times, then I've got the inventory move command that I wrote, and I'm telling it you're going to move it to from 1, which won't make sense, but I'll tell you about the crafting variable here in a second, and then you're going to move it to whatever inventory slot this function is telling you. So you can actually pass variables down into the functions. So we're going to be moving it into whatever inventory slot you put up here. And then lastly, I've included the crafting variable, which if you'll remember, up here, defaults to zero. And in the previous function, I didn't mention it, because I was going to mention it now. Uh, I put before the first mouse click, the first inventory slot click, if the default, or if the value of scraft variable is zero, then mouse click. And if you'll recall, the default is zero. So every time I run through this function, it should mouse click the first inventory slot. 
but that doesn't work for crafting because we're not clicking a previous inventory slot, we're crafting and then moving it to a new inventory slot. So if we put in the crafting variable of 1 here, it no longer performs this step. So as it comes through it sees, oh, craft is 1, so I'm not going to click the first inventory slot, which is what allows us to move it from just the inventory slot to the new inventory, or from the crafting table to the new inventory slot. And that's how that allows there. So, let's see. Oh, and then the converting snow function, and I'll let you look at it, I won't explain it because it's a little bit more in depth. But what this is doing is it's repeating a loop a whole bunch of times, which is just moving the snow blocks up to the crafting table, and every four snow blocks is performing the craft command and moving it to the previously used inventory slot. Uh, so I will go back to the video and show you. Oh, and then I guess the last function, the start function, is kind of the main one. So we start, and then for a loop of four, we're going to mine the snow, which all that's doing is each, each time this function runs is it's running through a, a shovel. So, you know, one shovel destroys, then we're going to mouse wheel down, so that selects down. And these, this is a native function as well. And then it's going to repeat. So kill on the second shovel, down, third shovel, down, fourth shovel, down. Then we're going to send page down, which is my key to open the inventory. Uh, the send command is really vital. You'll use that a ton in Autoit. And then after we've sent the key, we're going to move two sta or two stacks of the snowballs to get them into better positioning. If you'll, it's real quick in the video. You'll see it when we do it again. And then we're going to run the convert snow function, which is converting all the snow over. So I will show you that one last time in the video. All right, and we're back. Hopefully that wasn't too hideously boring of an explanation. So, again, we're all kind of go through the code we saw now. So, as I hit the end key, which is my hot key, we hit it. And right now it's running through all the mouse clicks. It's repeating 450 times per shovel, which is what I found just most easily beat through the shovel and finished it. Or, you know, it might be, I think it's 500 clicks, actually. So it's just repeating a mouse click 500 times and through a loop. So 4i is equal to 1 to 500, mouse click left at these coordinates, or actually you don't even need to do coordinates for this because it's centered in the middle of the video, so you just got to position it before you hit the hotkey. So it's repeating through that four times, and then after it's repeated through that it's going to hit the page down key to open my inventory. It's going to move two snowball slots to new inventory slots in the lower right, which again I just did to make it the loop process easier making the snow blocks. And we'll see that here in a second. So finishing up the four loop now. Done. Page down, move the two blocks, and so now we're going through the big loop, which is just going through each inventory slot. Again, coded as inventory slots, not as coordinate planes. Or not as coordinates. So it makes it real easy to code for, you know, new functions later. And then it's just clicking through a loop 16 times, and then moving the block down to the previously used inventory slot. And then this last one's going to be different. It's gonna, it needs left clicks because I'm doing this, and I didn't want to code left clicks. So I always just finish out that last block, and then dump it in my giant double chest of snow, which I've used... I think three double chests now that I've already used, so this has saved me a whole lot of time. Anyway, that's some of the power of Autoit, and if I use Autoit in the future with Minecraft, I'll definitely be posting new videos of it, so let me know what you think of Autoit. Thanks for watching.